प्राप्य पुण्यकृताम लोकान उषित्वा शाश्वती समाह शुची नाम श्रीमताम गेहे योगो भ्रष्टो भी जायते But this verse is sharing in a simple expression you're contemplating, you have a desire. This desire is not for peace. Then you die. What happens then? You go to heaven. Heaven is a physical place also. There, whatever you are desiring, whether it's pleasure or possession or position, you experience that. And after you've experienced that, you leave heaven and you are born into a home where the inner fabric of the home is that of purity and the outer fabric of the home is prosperity. Is everyone clear about that? That is the immediate explanation that which is in the realm of space and time this is the immediate explanation personalizing this internalizing this you're contemplating you have a desire a desire that is not for peace and then contemplation is finished for you Earlier it was you died. Now contemplation is finished in the sense that you're no longer trying to identify with peace. So then what do you do? Leaving contemplation, you have a experience of that desire. If I'm desiring going to a restaurant, I go to that restaurant. If I'm desiring to watch a TV show, I go do that. And after I have that experience, then I still continue with this privilege that I am pure inside and I am prosperous outside. I still have that privilege. To be able to contemplate, one needs to be privileged. You don't have to, you can't contemplate if you're worrying about how hungry you are or if someone's going to hurt your family. So look at it from both perspectives, okay? Heaven is an external place. Heaven is an internal place. Being born into a home of purity and prosperity is external, but it's internal too. The privilege that you experience on a daily basis. What we are to practice from this verse, I shared with all of you some months ago, for every verse, there should be a takeaway, a key point, what you are to practice, that which is tactile. It is to raise your desires, raise the quality 
of your desires so that contemplation does not end. For all of you who have been part of a silence retreat, what ha happens after contemplation? Contemplation continues while you eat. What happens then? Contemplation continues while you walk. What happens then? Back to contemplation with guidance. The contemplation never ends. So raise the quality of your desires. This will automatically trigger a reduction in the quantity of your desires. You become a better contemplator. Contemplation will only end by your choice. And that reduced qu uh, quantity will trigger a redirection in the flow of desires. You will not desire any pleasure, possession, position, only peace. I shared with you, Chuda Karana symbolizes that. Vanaprastha symbolizes that. The gopis symbolize that. They only desired desirelessness. The next analysis of the home that you're born to is coming in 42. But Sri Krishna doesn't give a prelude in this verse, so I'm giving it to you now. When one is practicing dhyana, what compromises dhyana is sankalpa, or desire. In verse 41, the quality of that sankalpa was rajasic. That's why I use the words pleasure, possession, position. In verse 42, the quality of the desire is sattve. Still a desire, but it is sattve. It is for peace. My prayer certainly is that every one of us will be enlightened in this lifetime. That when the body dies, we won't even know it because we have disidentified from this body. If, for whatever reason, we are not enlightened in this lifetime, we're still desiring peace, but we ran out of time. Such a home is now indicated. Is everyone clear about that? Let me add one more practical point here. How do we shift? from being the person in verse 41 to the person in verse 42, that seeker. Sri Krishna already gave this tip, abhyasa. The more you reflect, the more you will encourage vairagya. The more you will relieve, relieve yourself of dependence. In verse 41, there is a dependence on that prosperity, on that purity that is not shared in verse 42. Athava yogina meva kule bhavati dhimatam etad dhidurlabha. Sorry, I messed up the reading. Kula bhavati dhi matam etad dhi durlabhataram loke janmaya didrasham atava. So there's a comparison between 41 and 42. Kule, earlier it was born into a home. Now you're born into a family. Such a refinement in those words. It's less about the externalities. It's more about the <coughs> beings. Not the articles, but the beings. What kind of beings are you born with? Yogis. 
What kind of beings are you born with? Dhimatam, those who have illumined intellects. So in the previous verse, prosperity outside, hence gehe. Gehe means home. And purity, which is important. But there's a refinement in 42. A yogi is one who is following yoga only. And dhimatam, what's special here is, if you remember the framework of evolution, after shuddha comes tyaga. After shuddha, antakarana shuddha, that is shared in verse 41, but in verse 42, this person is more evolved. Ahankara tyaga, their intellect knows that there's more than the ego. They can see that. Now they're trying to be that. Etadhi durlabhataram loke janma yadidrasham such a family to be born in is difficult. It is incomparable. It is rare to be born in such a family. The essence of this verse is purpose. In verse 41, the contemplator has not a singular purpose, but a dual purpose. It is peace and this, this, and this. In verse 42, there is a singular purpose of peace. There is no other purpose. That's what a yogi should be feeling. That's what a wise personality should be feeling. Sri Krishna will share the same sentiment later on where he calls this Ananya Bhakti. Anya means others. Ananya, no other. So that when you're born into such a family, what is everyone doing? They all have the same purpose. Two more thoughts on how we can reflect on this. When I had driven back from Cleveland yesterday and Sheila and I were catching up, I was sharing with her that this month, somehow I've interacted with a lot of high school students. And what I've observed consistently in high school students and those in the beginning years of college the parents. And so the family, they're very much like the people described in verse 41. They have many purposes. Certainly peace is one of them, but they also have the purpose of position. So then possession has to be there. So pleasure has to be there. And so in those parents and in that family and in those kids, there's pressure. Too much pressure. It's like they had to become adults at the age of 15. For all of you, when did you become adults? Put an age there when you really felt you had a lot of responsibility in your life. That's fairly early. For me, I felt it was like I was in my 30s. You know, I got to be a kid. I got to be a teenager. I got to be a young adult. And I feel that helps me to be a better adult. And so I'm sharing this analysis for all of you, especially those who are caregivers, of those who are impressionable, your kids or a younger generation. Which home do you want to build? One of pressure or one of relief? The reason we're all born is to be happy, period. Everything else is auxiliary. Everything else, veiragya. It's falling away. Let it fall away. But it starts with everyone here. 
We have to practice this in contemplation so that this becomes our caregiving style. I digressed marginally only to emphasize you will only be born in such a home if every day, every week, every month, every year you're living like this with this singular purpose. Final thought. Yesterday I was teaching our Cleveland kids why we chant OM carefully. And I'd shared with them, infinity or Brahma is silence. Most of us are too rajasic or aggressive to embrace that. So then we chant OM which is an expression of that silence through sound. Om is a sound symbol. We chant Om carefully because this is a form of ajapa, japa. Japa is with sound, ajapa is without sound. The purpose of sound is for us to listen to and become silence. When you're practicing contemplation, when you're chanting with the mind, inquiring with the intellect, observing the ego, the chanting and the inquiring is a form of japa. You are initiating thought. But the only purpose you're doing that is to tune into that observation, which is a form of silencing the ego. Japa, verse 41. Ajapa, verse 42. Shandi. Shandi. Shanti. Appreciate, relax, enjoy, chant, inquire.
appreciating the lifestyle is not personalization. It is purification. Relaxing the body, enjoying the breath, chanting with the mind, inquiring with the intellect is not personalization. This is preparation. Personalization only relates to that which has triggered the separation from presence. The perfect joy. Many synonyms have been shared for contemplation, such as attention, identification, personalization, and another observation. The way the ego has separated itself from infinity. And so we are ever experiencing finitude. Contemplation is separating from the separating. And that sadhana, that practice, is to observe. If observing the thoughts is too subtle, too impractical, observe the breath. Observe the airflow. Observe how, as you breathe in, there is a sound of so. And as you breathe out, there is the sound of hum. So hum. He am I, he am I, he am I.
the more one practices. That is abhyasa. Practices observation of the experiences, our lifestyle. Practices observation of the equipment, our body, breath, mind, intellect. the more one will disidentify from the experiences and equipment in doing so you are taking away all the power of the ego which thrives and survives on identification. Do not plan to be born into a home, into a family of yoginam dhimadam. Do not. There's every chance we may get lost along the way and find ourselves in a home of prosperity and purity. Here, now, what is most important, all that is important is peace. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti. 